Your storage you will need for all of your resources. Well, in this video you will solve this problem with the most efficient mid-game storage room that can also be a standalone house. Besides the 60 chests and a total of 720 slots ready to be filled, it also allows you to get inside with your card to make it easy to unload it. For an extra, you will be able to leave two cards inside that can be useful if you play in a team. So, start placing the workbench and let's begin with the construction. We will start from the foundation that for the main part is a 4x5, but you need to extend the size by one tile only in the three central foundations. Do the same on the other side. Next, start placing the wood walls all around except for the two central foundations on one of the four tile sides where you need to place uh, two wood gates as the main entrance is a structure. Then add two wood stairs to get easier inside. Next, you need to add another row of wood walls on top of the already existing one. Lose two half walls on top of the gates. The following step is to make the roof before it will start raining. To do so, add in each corner the touch roof or corner and connect them with a normal one. The new corners have to be filled with the eye corner roofs. At this point, for the two tiles hole, use another series of O corner, while for the one tile, the ridge one. To finish the roof, use the normal roof to connect the two sides together. Also, only for aesthetic purpose, you can hide the ridge roofs with some floors that also will raise the stability of the roof. Don't forget the stairs that will decay over time during the rain. So add roofs on top of them and if you want add some beams to fortify the structure. You can even add some wood beams for the stairs themselves if you want but it is secondary. Time to start making the shelves. To do so snap some wood poles into the four tiles. Then start to arrange the chests on the ground as you see right now. Next step is to add a small wood floor on top of the central part of the wall, just slightly above the chest. Then extend it in both directions until it reaches the walls. This will allow you to stack another line of chests. The next part is slightly tricky, considering it will try to snap to the top of the floor that is too high respect to the chests that are lower. In this case, press and hold the shift button that will ignore automatic snapping, allowing you to place the small floor exactly on top of the chests, from where you need again extend it till the walls. Next, add on top of the poles another 1 meter poles and place the third row of chests as well. Now you need to switch to the wood beam and by hovering the shift button disabling the automatic snapping, you need to place it slightly inside the first pole. Then add some half walls to cover the rest of the space on top of it and extend both till the other side. To make it easy during the navigation inside the chest, I suggest to add on the top beam some sign upside each shelf. Plus, you will need some light during the night. This is why if you already look at the forge, place it outside. This way you can add some scones in the middle of each pillar. Done this, it's time to cover the top side and extend it to the roof. To do so, on the edges use some inclined wood walls, while in the middle the half walls. While for the lateral sides of the room, the job to do is the same. The only difference is that you will end with three shelves instead of four. And the part of the roof requires only one half wall in the middle. Don't forget to add the lights and repeat the same process on the other side. Despite you won't have four shelves on the sides, in exchange you will have uh, the space to park two cards here inside. The easier way to do so is with the gates opened. At this point the only thing left now is to remove the workbench and the forge if you don't think to expand it anymore and start filling each shelf with the loot you have. 